How's everyone doing today? I have a random bag of movies and nostalgia. Uh, there's a bunch of different items in here. I've done these videos before. It's been a long time since I have. Uh, there's movies in here and then just nostalgia stuff I figured I would share with you. And uh, this is stuff that I've got over at my parents' place, uh, cleaning out the last little bit of stuff. Uh, I think this is it for the movies, though. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. If you've seen these movies, definitely let me know what you think of them. And let me know what you think of the nostalgia items, too. <laughs> and let me know which one is your favorite of the movies and items. Leave me all those comments down below. First up is Blade Runner. This is the five-disc complete collector's edition. I have several different editions. I have the uh, set with the spinner up there. I've got the 4K now. Um, so maybe I'll get rid of this set, actually. Uh, but again, you know, it has four official versions on here, uh, including the final cut and the rarely seen work print. Uh, let me know what your favorite Ridley Scott movie is. Maybe outside of Blade Runner, in fact. But uh, all-time sci-fi classic. And again, I have so many different editions. I want to make sure all the right cuts are on the other different editions that I have, too. So before I get rid of this one. Because sometimes that's the thing. You pick up, like, the 4K or the new remaster, new special edition Blu-ray, and it doesn't have something in it, a special feature, or something's been changed or edited. That happens. So, you know, got to make sure everything's right on it before I uh, decide to get rid of that one. Uh, I don't want to get... I have so many different editions of certain movies, so I don't want to keep every single thing. I do love it. It's an all-time classic, but it's getting tough. <laughs> Space is at a premium, and uh, I gotta stop keeping multiple editions of different movies. Uh, but I, I keep the ones that I really, really love, and I do love that one. But I feel like that's such a like, kind of like a generic looking. It doesn't really stand. I've got other again like the four K. I got the spinner set. Uh, Caddyshack, an all time classic comedy movie. Uh, let me know what your favorite comedy movie is of all time, directed by Harold Ramis. Uh, but Bill Murray is so good. Rodney Dan, the whole cast, Chevy Chase. Oh, I love it so freaking much. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, good memories of watching this one. So many... If, if you've seen this movie, and if you haven't, definitely go see it. But uh, let me know what your favorite scene is in Caddyshack. And I consider, you know, it's a sports movie. It's a sports comedy. It's golf. Uh, next up is... I'm actually going to pick this one up on Blu-ray. Uh, I think it just came out on Blu-ray. The Mexican. I remember for the longest time, this is like one of those Blu-rays that I, I... Or one of the movies that I said definitely needs a Blu-ray release. Um, I definitely like this cover better, though, from what I've seen. Uh, that's something I've seen for some of the Blu-ray releases uh, for catalog titles recently. I like the old school, like, DVD artwork better. Uh, but James Gandolfini is so great in this one. And I remember just loving the heck out of this. And um, looking forward to revisiting it on Blu-ray. This is brand new, still sealed on DVD, but I have seen it a bunch. Uh, but a great one. Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts, uh, the story of the, the pistol with the, the hearts, right? I seem to remember that's what it was, but it's been a long time again. James Gandolfini, I think he's like the hitman in here. Uh, but I, I just remember loving this one. And I feel like it's a bit underrated too. And one that I remember thinking like that deserves a blue release. And I'm so happy that it finally does. Paramount um, has been releasing a lot of great catalog titles. Harlem Nights, which I've talked about that so many times needing a blue release. So happy that's getting one. Uh, next is uh, Kira Kurosawa's Ron. And this is a steelbook version, and this is, I want to say, it is Japanese, maybe? Uh, maybe not. Maybe, maybe I see Japanese, I see something on the back here, but maybe it's actually, uh, like a, maybe it's like a Spanish steelbook. A Spanish, there's so many different cool Spanish steelbook for uh, DVDs back in the day. Uh, the Third Days of Night Blood Pack steelbook, which I've shown before, it's like my favorite steelbook. Uh, it's my favorite vampire movie, too. Let me know what your favorite vampire movie is. Let me know what your favorite Akira Kurosawa movie. Um, it's been so long. I know there's just a Lion... Uh, uh, recently, Lionsgate just released one, a Steelbook Blu-ray um, 4K Steelbook for uh, Ron. So uh, it's been so long. So, you know, I've had this Steelbook for ages. And uh, it's got the two discs in here and a big booklet. So I think I'm actually going to get rid of this one. I do like uh, the horizontal design for it, but... Again, so many different editions. And, you know, the Lionsgate Steelbook looks amazing, too, for the artwork. Um, I would have to say Hidden Fortress, though. Uh, there's been... I feel like some of the Kurosawa films I saw, like, 20 years ago. Like, I remember when uh, Criterion, like, some of the Criterion DVDs were coming out. It, like, kind of introduced me to a lot of new films at that time. So I was checking out, especially a lot of Kurosawa. Uh, so Bergman and Fellini and stuff like that. And now, though, I feel like it, it seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, so uh, next up is Immortal, which is a steel book. And I love uh, the debossing on the title. I remember seeing this one and I like only vaguely remember it. I feel like it was something about like gods and, you know, a lot of CG animation stuff and people with, like bird heads and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, Egyptian gods and uh, year is 2095 and uh, skies in Manhattan uh, have all these, you know, crazy characters and uh, it was interesting, but I remember like not loving it, but I want to revisit it. I feel like it had some, you know, potential, but the, it just wasn't fully executed uh, well enough. But uh, I, the CG animation was hit or miss too, but uh, got to revisit that one before I make a final decision. Uh, next up is the Candyman trailer right there. Um, so that is pretty cool. Uh, back in the day, uh, Kakalaki movies on here. I don't think they make videos anymore. I don't think they have in years, in fact. Uh, but Crazy Jason sent this to me. So that was really cool, and I still have it. And uh, Candyman's one of my all-time favorite slashers, one of my favorite 90s horror movies. So super awesome. Uh, it's a shame that the rest of the franchise wasn't that good. The reason was actually decent. Like, I, I can understand some of the criticisms with it, but I still think it was the second best in the franchise, two and three, were terrible. And I feel like Tony Todd deserved better than that. He was iconic in that role. Um, next up, just some random stuff. I've got a James Blake autographed tennis ball right there. Uh, from uh, There used to be a product back in the day called Ace Authentic. And I remember getting a Serena Williams uh, autographed tennis ball. It was like such a mind-blowing hit. Uh, so pretty cool, James Blake. I love those those products back in the day. There was like, uh, you know, TriStar Hidden Treasures for baseball. You open up a box and you get different signed baseballs. And then um, Ace Authentic had it for the tennis. Next up is a promo item for the movie True Grit. I don't know if I've shown this one before or not, but uh, this is really cool. I love this. This is for uh, the remake of it, which I thought was excellent. Um, just a uh, great cast for that one. That really helped elevate it. And uh, 2010, mind-blowing that it came out then. 2000, is that real? My gosh, time flies. But you open it up like this, and inside it's got that like kind of like straw, and you get a True Grit flask. So I think that is pretty cool. I do uh, enjoy this movie. Uh, again, I think it was a really good remake and a uh, really good modern Western movie too. So I think it's a really cool piece. And it comes in this nice hard wooden box. And let's see, what else am I going to show you in here? Ah, <laughs> I have this just weird little, probably like Dollar Tree uh, skeleton guy. It makes me think of uh, Flick Pick. He used to have his little skeleton guy he'd have in videos and stuff. I, I remember, I, he still makes videos, just not as frequently. He makes, uh, you know, movie reviews here and there. And uh, I remember he used to do a lot of like vlog stuff on his second channel. Uh, but he was one of those channels that, like, for on here, for the movie community, blew up. I'd say he was the quickest to just really just blow up and uh, to the level that he did. I feel like other people that really blew up um, talk movies with us, which unfor they unfortunately don't make uh, videos anymore. Uh, so that was another channel that was really cool to see, like, a couple uh, talking like that. And uh, they were just fun. So, I don't know, it just makes me think of Flick Pick, though, with this uh, skeleton guy. I can't remember what the name of his skeleton guy was, though. Uh, next up, uh, more nostalgia stuff. I've got a troll doll. This is probably from when I was like in third grade with a mohawk and he's got a guitar right there too. Um, and he's, he's got his butt right there hanging out, but <laughs> the little troll dolls were like all the rage when I was a, a kid in elementary school. So it's wild to see that again after so long. Here's another troll doll. Cute, lovable. But I think these were like really popular like way back, I don't know, like 60, 70, something like that. And then they got like, a, you know, what was uh, old is new again and cool and fun. So it had a resurgence. And uh, I think they were like still making troll dolls too. And then the troll movies recently. The first troll movie, I didn't see the second, but the first one was actually way more entertaining than I thought it would be. But uh, it says cute and lovable on there. <laughs> it's, it's so wild to see like stuff from when you were so little and, you know, seeing it now is like, it's a flashback. Next up, though, is this awesome Slimer Bank. Uh, this is from uh, Diamond Select Toys. Uh, in fact, I got a couple other right up there at the top. Um, got the Predator and the Aliens uh, bust uh, sets right there, which they're these uh, like vinyl banks, and they just look really cool on display. I don't use them as a bank, but just as a display piece. And that Slimer one is dope. I love it. 
So Slimer is freaking awesome. Uh, Ghostbusters uh, Afterlife was a lot of fun. I was going in there kind of hesitant, um, but it turned out to be a really entertaining movie. Next up, I got a couple of VHS tapes. Uh, we've got Dream Team uh, the from 96. Not the classic Dream Team, but um, this is also really cool. It's brand new, still sealed. Uh, maybe I'll get it graded. That's like a new thing, VHS grading, which is... I, I kind of get it, and it's also... it's uh, People crap on it, but at the same time, like people are grading comic books, and we've been grading comic books for you know, like 30 plus years. I don't know how long comic book grading has been around, but at least 30 years. And you can't, you know, comic books meant to be read, but uh, you, you can't read it. So if you're grading a VHS tape, you can't watch it. Uh, when is it going to be like grading DVDs, grading Blu-rays? I feel like that's in the future. And uh, some of the VHS tapes that are graded go for crazy money. And I don't think it's a gimmick. I don't think it's, you know, people are saying it's all, oh, it's just, that's not really selling for that. It's fake bids. It's Monday, la Monday laundering. No, I, I truly believe that it is. People will pay it, collectors for sure. Uh, and again, you know, sports card grading and stuff like that. Uh, it's a real thing. In fact, you know, I, I got some sports cards right next to me, which I will show you. This has nothing to do with it, but just to give you an idea, there's my, my Luca uh, PSA 10 Gem Mint. You know, these ones don't go for too much, these particular. And then Giannis, another Gem Mint 10 PSA. Um, but there's a market for it. There's a huge market for it. So um, it, it's definitely a thing. And this is crazy to see Caldor. I remember Caldor all the time. I used to go to the, the Newburgh Mall back in the day. I, I grew up everywhere, but that one in particular, I remember that mall going to all the time, the Caldor there, but that's long gone. Uh, but you see all the basketball players on there. Uh, what a great lineup though. Um, just all time classic. Uh, let me know who your favorite basketball player is growing up. And uh, I grew up in the video rental store, mom and pop stores, uh, Captain Home Video, Joe's Video, Easy Video. Uh, but I was huge into basketball. As a kid, I played basketball. Uh, and so I was really into everything basketball. So it's cool to actually see this. I'm going to keep this for the memories. Uh, next up is another VHS tape. <laughs> Don't be a menace uh, to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. I actually rewatched this recently uh, for the first time in a long time. And... It was a little cringy at times, not as funny as I remember it being, but it had some moments, you know, parroting all like the, the movies that came out during that time period. Uh, so again, Juice is an all-time classic. It's great to see that getting so much love on the physical media recently. But Above the Rim needs a Blu-ray release. How does that not have a Blu-ray release? Come on, Paramount. Uh, you're doing so well with so many other titles, Juice included. Uh, but yeah, that one needs one for sure. But our Jersey Drive, is, there's Dead Presidents. There's a ton that need Blu-ray releases still. Uh, but this is a ridiculous one. Uh, I met the Waynes Brothers once and they were jerks, especially Marlon. But I feel like I heard that a bunch during that time period. He wasn't fan friendly or anything like that. I saw him at a local comedy club. I went to see their stand up and uh, both of them were super douchey, especially Marlon though. I talked about it before, but uh, I heard now that like, they're, they've kind of maybe changed their way because they realize how important you know, dealing with fans uh, can be. And especially with, uh, you know, Marlon, I think it was once he did his like Haunted House spoof movie, I feel like he started, you know, being more fan friendly, doing more like interviews and stuff like that. Uh, so hopefully, you know, they learned the ways. But uh, yeah, I was disappointed to meet them and uh, to see they were kind of jerks. But um, this is, I still like them, uh, especially Marlon as an actor. Uh, but, you know, uh, this one though, I don't know if I'm going to keep this one. I remember liking it a lot more as a kid as I than I do now, but it's still fun. It's still entertaining. It's nostalgia for me, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, next up, we've got some cassette tapes, which is cassette tapes. Oof. That's something I'm glad, you know, CDs and, you know, I'm physical media when it comes to, uh, you know, books and movies, but for music, I don't know. I got my YouTube playlist going and stuff like that. Ah. So I'm not really collecting CDs or anything like that. In fact, I'm getting rid of my vinyl records because I don't have a vinyl player or record player anymore. But this was, I had a cassette uh, alarm clock and this is what I woke up to every morning in high school. Beastie Boys. Um, this is so incredible to me to see this tape after so long. Licensed ill, I would wake up to, this is what, you know, the alarm went off and it played uh, some of the songs on here. So that is cool. This is a keeper for me. I'm going to keep this one. Um, one of my all-time favorite albums right there. Uh, Meatloaf. Uh, sad he recently passed away. This is Bat Out of Hell 2. 
So pretty cool to see the artwork and everything on here. You know, there's meatloaf right there in the inside. Uh, but yeah, I'm probably not gonna keep these other ones. I want uh, Wayne's World 2 soundtrack on here. This was a great soundtrack actually. And it's so funny because I remember there was like, uh, was it The Wall or something like that that had like a lifetime guarantee? Um, you know, and you get your CDs and cassette tapes and you put that little sticker on there, but they went out like 20 years ago. So I think it's just kind of funny, but uh, I don't know if I'll keep, maybe I'll, that's tempting to keep that one, but I'm not going to keep this Aerosmith one. Uh, the other side. So yeah, this is a, a single right here. Uh, there's a few songs on here though. So oh, in fact, uh, from Wayne's World theme, from Wayne's, my, my girl. So that's probably why I picked it up at the time. I do like Aerosmith. Let me know what your favorite Aerosmith song is. Let me know what your favorite movie soundtrack is. Let me know what your favorite Meatloaf song is. That's kind of be an easy one. Your favorite Beastie Boys song. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's a few more items over here. Uh, I got some old like comic book cards which I'm gonna get rid of these for sure. I was huge into comic books growing up as a kid. I used to love the draw. I wanted to be a comic book artist, uh, you know, basketball player, comic book artist, astronaut, you know? Um, and we've got, I'll just go through these pretty quickly. It's just cool to see. Oh, I remember these ones from the Wizard magazines, those foil ones. Those are pretty amazing. But I'm probably gonna get rid of all of these ones just because, I don't know. I know I have more of these somewhere too. There's Shadowhawk, Savage Dragon. I love the image comics growing up here's some of the death watch ones these are all like inserts and stuff foil cards and wolverine i hate that drawing of wolverine with his weird fat shaped body i could have drawn better than that when i was in like third grade that guy got paid for it too um here's some ones i don't really remember freaks and slayer i don't remember these particular uh cards at all but oh i remember here's some more um Todd McFarlane's Santa Todd, more like wizard stuff. And I remember some of these ones were like, you know, hard to come by, especially the wizard uh, ones that, um, Wizard Magazine was so awesome. It was like a magazine for, you know, comic books and stuff. It had like a price guide, but it would have like news stories and stuff like that. But uh, some of these uh, wizard cards would go for, back in the day, I, I doubt they have the value anymore, but it's just cool to see them uh, again after all this time. But uh, I, I'm not gonna keep them, there's just, you know, I've, there's going to be other people who appreciate them more than I do. It's cool to see them again and relive the memories, but... Oh, I remember these spawn cards right here. Some foil ones that connect like that, so that's pretty cool. Is it Violator? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd love to see another spawn movie made. So, that was an odd... I love the heck out of that movie. John Leguizamo doing uh, the voice right there, too. Uh, Michael Jai White, why isn't he in more movies? I thought he was like an awesome action star. He's still in stuff, but he should be a bigger star than he is. Oh, I remember they were huge, Gen 13. Um, uh, Rip Claw. I love these foil, kind of like uh, glossy ones too, and acetate. This is during like that 90s comic book boom where everything was overproduced. Um, oh, Manny Ramirez rookie card from the, the Star Flex, that moving design right there look a young manny right there not listening to it he did all kinds of just crazy stuff in the outfield you know so many crazy ridiculous stories with him then he listened to like earphones while playing out there and he tried to like go to the bathroom and he uh you know a ball came to him when he was still back there all crazy stories with him here's a uh tops finest of charles barkley with uh that little layer of protection on there that you're supposed to peel off here's one of those uh oh, i remember loving this basketball set uh uh, for uh, Upper Deck back in the day. I was in 92 for the, the drawings, though, of uh, Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, Birdman and Agent 23. And some Garbage Pill Kids cards. I was big into Garbage Pill Kids. This one was like one of those rare ones, in fact. I remember this specifically, Crystal Gale. There was like three different versions of this particular card, not just A and B. And I think this was the one that was like hard to get. And for a while it was going for money, but I don't think it's going for anything now. Uh, Max, I used to love this TV show. I was at Sam Keith. Um, I gotta get that actually. And just, I'm gonna try to go through this a little bit quicker. I'm sorry. Just seeing this is pretty awesome. Look at that Superman one, that hollow foil. How cool is that? Um, but just some more cool cards in here. Just seeing the characters just brings back all the memories. Cable was my favorite comic book character growing up as a kid. 
Oh, that's cool. Look at this. It was like a Marvel and then the back image with a young blood. So some awesome Rob Liefeld stuff back in the day. But let me know who your favorite comic book character was. Cable was essentially like a Terminator ripoff, but he was so cool. Look at that darkness one. Look at that card. It's so freaking cool. Was that Wills Portacio, I think? Um, but yeah, just so many cool cards on here. She. Evil Ernie, right? Is that who that was? Yeah. And then Lady Death. Vampirella. Another Lady Death card. Yeah, Lady Death, Vampirella, those ones were like real hot back in the day too. Those characters. Here's a, a Medal of Human Torch. That looks cool. Another one, Medal of Doc Ock. Yeah, so these are all like insert cards and stuff, all foil cards and, you know, stuff like that. So if you got one of these cards that made your day, Punisher 2099. I love those 2099, especially Spider-Man. There's a Doctor Doom one too. Was it Ravage or something? Ravage or something like that. But that's a cool like red foily one. And then I got this real awesome Valiant Comics one for Secret Weapons. It's a foil one. I used to love Valiant Comics. There need to be more Valiant Comics movie adaptations. Uh, the only one I can think of right now is Bloodshot, which I still haven't seen with that Vin Diesel, but I heard it was terrible, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, all right, there's just a couple more things to show you. I've got this uh, 10 edition, but yeah, Valiant Comics. Such an opera, Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, Exo Mana War, Solar Mana Adam, Archer Armstrong, um, the Shadow Man, so many cool characters they can adapt for movies. But I have this Sweet Spot Classic 10. Um, this was a baseball card set from, uh, I think this was 2007, but you, I was, it was expensive, like, a, maybe, I don't know, like a hundred bucks or something. You would get, um, you get one, uh, sweet spot signature card number to 175 or less per 10 on average, five cards per 10. When I was a kid growing up with some of these cards, I just showed you, you know, if you got an all-star or I'm about to show you two, actually, I, I know what's in this one. Uh, you know, if you got an all-star or a rookie, that was your big hit, but now you, you can spend hundreds on a pack with like five, seven cards. And, uh, you know, because you're guaranteed an autograph or a piece of the jersey or something like that. But love the 10 set. I uh, love this. This is one of, like, my favorite sets back in the day. Uh, Babe Ruth on there, too. But there's some cards in here that I think are pretty cool, including, uh, what year was this? Uh, 88, I believe, Jordan. I believe that's what it is right there. But uh, this Fleer Jordan card, 88 or 9. The text is, like, so minute on the back. But uh, I looked this up and I saw like a chewed up version of this card go for 35. So this one's got to be, uh, you know, worth a little bit more than that. It's funny, some of those Jordan cards, uh, especially the older ones, you can get some bank for it. Um, but yeah, this one, the centering is terrible from the top to the bottom. But still, you know, I'm expecting to get a little bit, maybe 50 bucks or so for it. Uh, so it's pretty cool to see that. I'm not going to keep that. Uh, I got rid of most of my cards a long time ago. I still have a a bunch, though, I know I need to get rid of. There's a, a Greg Maddox uh, Tops Traded uh, right there. So that's pretty cool. Got to get some uh, Maddox rookies. I was a big Cubs fan, still a Cubs fan uh, growing up. Let me know who your favorite baseball team is, your favorite basketball team, your favorite football team. I follow the big American three. Uh, basketball is my favorite to play. Football is my favorite to watch now. Basketball close second. And baseball, I don't know, man. I, remember, I feel like the games, they seem like they're 20 hours long now. Tony Gwynn is an old one uh, from, uh, what is it, 80, 84, I think this is, on here. 84 tops. Tony Gwynn, one of the greatest hitters of all time. I feel like if he didn't put on so much weight, he would have been even better. Um, Mark McGuire, rated rookie. Don Russ. But yeah, to see some of these cards, like I remember just going crazy. Jose Consego too, the Bash Brothers right there. Um, so pretty awesome right here to see these cards after so long. Cal Ripken, um, you know, this was 83. So yeah, uh, you know, 80 or like late eighties, early, like to mid nineties. Like that was my time for collecting sports cards and stuff. And then these ones are, um, ones that I got in like the two thousands. Uh, this was SP authentic when it was a game with Pee Wee Reese, old time ball player. And that's like a piece of his Jersey right there. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, Ron Guidry, uh, which is numbered at a 225 for this one. I don't know what the P. Reese is number. Ooh, almost dropped it. Uh, it's numbered out of, but uh, it's the Brooklyn Dodgers for P. Reese. But uh, Ron Guidry for the Yankees right there. And it's got the pinstripe, which is really cool. It's got the gold one. I know I had another one of these, which is like a silver one. Can't remember which is uh, the rarer of the two. Maybe this one. But uh, pretty cool looking. And one more thing real quick, real quick. Um... 
Let me show you this one. These are uh, old baseball card postcards. And this is for the Mets right here, Dale Strawberry. And uh, we've got um, Gary Carter. Uh, I grew up in, uh, I grew up a little bit everywhere, but I spent a lot of time in Virginia. Half my family was from Virginia and there's the Tidewater Tides, which is like, um, you know, the AAA team for uh, uh, the Mets. And um, we got, uh, who's this one? John Gibbons. And uh, Dave Magadan, I remember him. And then we got uh, Ricky Henderson. So that's pretty cool. I remember looking this up on uh, eBay actually. And there was like somebody that wanted like, I read like a couple hundred dollars for this card and I don't, it's not worth that. I think they're just, you, know, you can put whatever you want price wise on eBay. It doesn't mean anybody's not gonna actually buy it. Um, and then Don Mattingly, Donnie Baseball, look how young he is now. Ah, uh, you know, he's getting a lot older managing now. <laughs> The stress of that. We've got the Toledo Munhens uh, for uh, Jerry Lamastro. I don't remember him. <laughs> Another Toledo Munhens card, Dennis uh, Burt. So, you know, we got some of these minor league teams on here too, which is kind of cool. And then we got some of the, these Donruss champion ones, Jeff Burrows, uh, Wade Boggs. There you go. That's a legend right there. Uh, Hank Aaron, definitely a legend. Uh, I feel like he's just for me, Hank Aaron is. The home run leader um you know barry bonds I, I just i just look at him and consider him to be the true home run champion uh fred lynn you know there's certain things like cheating was always part of baseball spitballing you know scuffing the ball doing things like that but straight up just taking you know your barry bonds head got huge <laughs> just unnatural looking all the stuff that he put in his body I, I don't i know you still have to do everything else you can't just take it just automatically like you look at Consego. I uh, didn't turn him into Barry Bonds, uh, but I don't know. I digress. Uh, but we got Tom Seaver, another uh, Mets legend right there. Uh, it's cool to see these kind of like uh, postcard ones. But yeah, I was really big into comic books and uh, sports cards and stuff when I was a kid. So ooh, this rubber band just broke right in my face. I don't know if that caught that on camera, but it's cool to see all these again after so long. So it's just a mixture of nostalgia and movies for me. Uh, so I was always a collector, even since I was a little kid. Uh, baseball cards. I remember when I was a kid, you'd get some baseball cards. You get, you know, your friends. You would try to trade, but you'd play this game where you would flick the card off like a uh, the the stoop. Uh, so you'd uh, put them up against the stoop, and you would try to, you know, throw a card. And if it knocked one of those other cards over, you got that card. Uh, I don't know if anybody else played that game back in the day, uh, but really cool to see all this stuff. Um, I have pretty much everything out of my uh, parents' old place now. So I just have like a few things to get. I think this is it for the movies. But let me know what you think of all of this. I hope you guys enjoyed this really random video. Seeing some movies in here and seeing a lot of nostalgia from my childhood. Things that were really cool to me growing up and things I collected. Let me know what you collected growing up as a kid. Let me know what you collect now besides movies if you do collect anything else. Uh, but let me know if you've seen the movies and what you think of them. And uh, let me know what your favorite movie was that I just showed and your favorite item in this random bag of movies and nostalgia. Leave me those comments down below and I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.